187 at 5810 Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. Welcome, guys. My name is Tatra Ninja, and this is the first what that get case. Up of yours, anyway. I should start introducing us as Detective Earl, and this is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. Your interest in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Like it or not, we're a dysfunctional couple now. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. <laughs> Alright, now that these two are making out, he does have a point. Our suit is pretty ugly. Let's do a switch here. Go to outfits. I'm gonna wear the Broderick. That looks pretty sexy. But yeah, like I was saying, this is the first case of four as of release right now of the LA Noir DLC that is available for you guys to download. This one actually came free with my PlayStation uh, copy, but I was kind of upset because I eventually just ended up buying the Rockstar Pass because it was just worth it that way. And I was kind of upset I kind of wasted the, the voucher I could have given to like one of you guys or something like that. But yeah, uh, this is DLC. Uh, PlayStation stores back up. So we have our case. Let's go to the, to the area, I guess. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Oh, how I hate Roy Earl. You seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for. So what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of L.A. forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages, the odds for and against lightning striking. Second floor, apartment six, in the back. So what you're going to notice with this DLC is that there are a lot of hints that contribute to the overall storyline. So since Roy Earl is our partner once again, uh, as you can tell, this is kind of, we're back into the Vice cases. So all these missions of the DLC so far are flashback missions that are kind of just filler in between of all the previous cases that we've done. Um, there hasn't been any DLC as of yet that progresses the storyline beyond uh, what happens in the last mission. So everything's flashback at this point. So the first clue that we are hinted to get later, but I'm just going to grab it now, is in this trash can. And it's this army surplus morphine that we've come well, accustomed to. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. The autopsy will confirm it one way or another. So we don't have to come back to get that. Next, climb up the staircase, go into the apartment building. I think there's a cutscene, yeah. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? Or can we get on with it? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub, rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. I think our suit's the best out of all of them. <laughs> All right, so the first clue that we want to look at is these pictures right here. What we really need is the middle one. There's been a modeling assignment. Then flip it over, open the back, and there's a message. 
It's place to start. All right? We don't have to examine every single one of them. It's just that middle one that we need. Okay. Next, we go into her bedroom. Go through her underwear drawer, of course, like we always do for every single mission. <laughs> uh, examine the pills on the ground. Looks like barbiturates. Then the jacket that's hanging right here. It's a men's jacket. Quality English smoking jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. Then the medicine container on her nightstand. Open her up. What else is rattling around in this thing? You gotta examine it twice. You should speak to her doctor. Prescribing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. Okay. Then we go examine the body. We see our old friend house, the uh, coroner. <laughs> Sculpts? Val, we've had a look around. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? Yeah, I took a look. Be my guest. So we got to look at all three points here. We're starting on look the at left head and neck. or the right hand. Bruising on the forearms and these look like bite marks. Very good. She's wearing a towel, though. Don't get to see if she's bushy down there, like we have with all the other cases. Uh, and hand, get the ring. Very unusual ring. I could be wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. And then the neck. Whoops. Put down that hand, Phelps. Head. There we go. The neck is bruised pretty badly. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine, and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down, and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. And spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the serrets. It would make my theory. The morphine would have been very quick, and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay. So find two guys who recently bought serrets and weren't junkies, and you might be onto something. Is it her? Any photos? Something else. I guess maybe I was incorrect. I think you do have to examine every single photo. Let's see. Pretty girl like that. Maybe she was having trouble with some boys, huh? She got see here. This is all top end of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. Look at the back. Nothing's in this one. The only reason I say this is because the music saying that we haven't gotten all the clues is still running. Beautiful girl. Clothes certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. I remember ordering from the Sears catalog when I was younger. <laughs> it was awesome. Now, is that it? Yeah, there's our music. Alright, now we can interview I'm her. Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. All right, victim's state of mind. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. Shifty eyes lie. 
What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. Evidence is the sleeping pills. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star, a princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Shouldn't look into it, lady. You're far from a modeling career. <laughs> Victim's personal life. Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. Liar. Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. You can't prove that. Men's smoking jacket is your evidence. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. But that's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. Finally, relationship with victim. What was it like working for Miss Randall? Perfectly fine, officer. <laughs> Doubt. Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement and then you can go home. I think our work is done here. So that's it for Stephon this area. Oh. We'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? Man, Phelps just giving orders like You think the Carruthers boss. has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm a Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Okay, so now we're gonna go visit her place of work. She was a model. So, we're gonna go visit that area next. Bukowski Drive. You're behind the wheel. Decine Dress Store. I'm going up to the lake. Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast, you barely had time to learn their names. Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch. Going here to talk to the owner. Well, hello. What can I help you with today? Hello? LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. Victims employment history. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Truth. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy, and neither was I. Did she have any close friends here? 
Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, full of wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. <laughs> Relationship with victim. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. It's truth. Henry is your beau. Tell us about it. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Informed of Mr. Henderson. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? It is also truth. Straight face. She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiancé to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. All right, now we're gonna go visit the doctor that wrote that prescription of medicine she was hiding. So, doctor, do we know Stone's where we're going? Practice. Nice move, not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking the big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. Just as a reminder that in the very first scene where we're searching that girl's apartment, if you found all the narcotics narcotics that I showed you, all the drugs and stuff, you actually get a trophy or an achievement for that, so just put that out there. Here, Stoneman, Office 505. Alrighty, I'll take the elevator. Hey, a building in the 40s that was actually wheelchair accessible. I haven't run many <laughs> into many of those this game. Uh... I swear, if we lock up every doctor in this town, Vice would be able to work half days. Five oh five is right here. Of course, there's gonna be a secretary. Yes, sir. Your name? LAPD. We'd like to see Doctor Stoneman. Doctor Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Sorry, buddy. investigation is much more important. Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. Relationship with victim. How well did you know Miss Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Liar. 
Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? No, I just have the prescription that you wrote her over a year ago. <laughs> your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine? It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. Additional medications. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. It is doubt. Benzedrine is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. Go back outside. I definitely, out of all the secretaries in this game, I would not tap this one. <laughs> Use the phone. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge twelve forty-seven. How could I help, detective? Any messages? Yes, detective. The coroner has been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. You heard him. We gotta go visit the good doc at the morgue. Well, it's actually not the morgue. It's a receiving hospital. Which is actually conveniently placed across the street from the police station. <laughs> Which is our next spot after this, so yeah. Two birds with one stone. I like Phelps' suit. The old boy is lying. About what? I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of a young patient. Like I was saying, I just wanted you guys to catch that conversation. This suit was actually included in the Rockstar Pass. It increases your punching and the amount of your, your uh, damage with punches as well as the, the amount of damage you can take. So once again, it all came it all, all came in a package with the Rockstar Pass. So if you're gonna get the DLC, I just suggest you go with that. It's just your best value. You know Even the way. If you do you get drive. the free stuff, anyways. Where are we going? Buy the game. The Rockstar Pass is still good to go. It's only ten bucks. You get some guns, you get some suits, and you get all four of the cases. So yeah. Guarantee. Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician-patient privilege card when they got some to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private. Until it gets in the way of police work. And it's only private when it suits them. A couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. 